Welcome to Cypher 2024. Today we have Ram, who's advisor to CEO of uh, Digiatra and founder of Biometric. So hello Ram, how are you doing? Hi, hi, I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. So uh, while I was listening to listening to your talk and uh, I came across a very fascinating subject uh, using biometrics over OTPs, right? But my question is, uh, we are in India, right? So uh, when geo revolution come in, uh, most uh, individuals were powered by geo phone, which is very basic phone. Uh, how your thought aligns with such population which does not even have uh, basic access to a simple Android smartphone and they have to still use a functional phone. So what do you think about it? Yeah, so I'm so glad you asked this question because um, when we mean inclusion, we truly mean everyone should be able to use these biometrics. Right? So my organization is currently working on next path breaking technology, okay. which will allow even users who don't have a smartphone to get biometric authenticated. And I have recently filed a patent on it as well. Okay. So even with a paper, mm -hmm. if you just have a paper, you don't even need a basic phone, you okay. will be able to authenticate yourself. Can you explain it a bit like how, how it might work or? If you are able to successfully store entire biometric data mm -hmm. and your PII data uh -huh. and crunch it into a QR. Uh -huh. The way someone scanned my QR code here, mm -hmm. what if this also gives your face data? Okay. And then the scanner will decode it mm -hmm. and do a one-to-one -one match mm -hmm. and you're authenticated. I mean, even if you have a basic phone, so today having a QR on that is possible, right? Correct, because correct. At the end of the day, it's pixels. Mm -hmm. So we can always use QRs uh, mm -hmm. to do that scanning and to authenticate. At the same time, I believe now, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of transition happening from the basic phone to you know smartphones, right? But 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 we should cater to all types of phones. I would I would rather not categorize people based on the phones okay. because I have seen even millionaires using basic phone, exactly. right? So um, to cater to all type of mobile devices. The idea was to skip OTPs and then use your facial biometrics, right? But then you were saying that you will be uh, adding facial data to QR. Yeah. So how secure would it be? Like you, if someone can carry QR up and has a facial data, yeah. so anyone could scan and might get access to your personal data. Absolutely. One, it is encrypted mm -hmm. and another is we have introduced the technology. Even if I get your QR, mm -hmm. I'll not be able to get your biometric data out of it. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's the path breaking technology which we are working on. Okay. So I'll be happy to show you a demo as well later. I would love to. Can you share a, a, a glimpse about it? Like how it might work? Like well, we are encoding your face data in a specific format, mm -hmm. which cannot be reconstructed. Okay. It's not your typical face data. Okay. It cannot be reconstructed. Okay. So it has to be decoded by that library which has encoded it. So there is no way for anyone to get that data and make meaning out of it. Okay. That's how it works. So in India, uh, building some something from scratch, like uh, let's say Llama or uh, mm -hmm. model like Claude or OpenAI's Chat GPT. It, it is not possible because we don't have, we don't have enough resources. Like it, it might take uh, like billions of dollars to something to build something from scratch. So there I came across a concept called mixture of experts. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we do is uh, we let, let's say uh, we have a couple of uh, llamas and which are specifically trained on the special languages like uh, model one is trained on over Gujarati, two for Hindi, three for Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, etc. Mm -hmm. And then we merge all together them. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a specific model which can understand all the languages. Uh, so one model which understands everything, which yeah. is more efficient than a typical Claude or Chat GPT. Yeah. Huh. So uh, what what is your take on such tech? Absolutely, I think it would be a game changing thing. Imagine, right? It's like if I'm able to speak ten languages. Yeah. Then I can interact with ten people of all those languages and able to interpret what they are saying and answer in their own language. Yeah. Personalization, right? So I think it would be a great idea and I think uh, whoever is working on this, my compliments to them and I wish that, you know, they are able to pull it off successfully. Okay. What you are trying to do different uh, yeah. than DG Yatra? What I'm trying to do different is I am actually trying to provide the use cases beyond DG Yatra, right? So, so DG Yatra is right now specific to airports. It may, it may go to other places as well, right? So I have my own proprietary software, mm -hmm. which has got nothing to do with DG Yatra. It's completely proprietary. And as I said, so I'm coming up with something which is not at all storing even the hash value on the server. It's all completely, truly decentralized, wherein we have point-to-point -point validation, point-to-point -point verification. At the same time, because I have my own patent, so I would like most of the organizations to make use of this patent because this patent is not easily breakable. I would rather say it's impossible to break because I spent good two years doing research around it and uh, getting a patent is also not very easy, right? Because there are millions of applications. Um, at the same time, the advantage is it works offline, doesn't need internet. 
It doesn't send any data to the server, nice. even for processing for that matter. And wherever there is no internet, it works there, right? It's an action-based um, uh, way of ascertaining that if the person is live or not. And uh, a lot of entities have reached out to me and I am under discussion to, you know, make use of this technology. So I always hear people saying, where is innovation in India? And I think this is one of the homegrown solution which I would, you know, like to take to the world. Even I believe in on-prem devices. Absolutely. Yeah. So my last question is, uh, how's your uh, uh, how's your experience with Cypher 2024? Well, I think uh, it is, I would say, the big daddy of all. That's what I felt, right? Nice. Because it's uh, it's amazing to see so many people, you know, come together. And uh, I, I don't remember seeing a holding as big as Cypher, which I saw it in Bangalore Airport. Because I have traveled to the airport a lot. And uh, I think, yes, I think you're, you're truly bringing, bringing a mix of government, private, that blend is very difficult to get right. So, and I think uh, you are truly catering to the audience rather than concentrating on the speaker. That is how it should be. This event is not meant for the speakers. It's meant for the people who are here to attend, right? So I believe it's great. And I think uh, uh, I think you're doing great. And I think uh, all the team members I would like to thank for, because I know a lot goes behind arranging this. Right? It's not very easy. So yeah, I think, I think it's fantastic. Means a lot, sir. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, thank you. being with us. Thanks a lot.